What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bible Vlog. Today, I am so happy, not just because it's Monday and the beginning of the week, but because the Cowboys beat the Giants. We won! <laughs> oh yes. Let's roll the intro. So today we're picking back up in chapter seven and we're reading about the king of righteousness. So there's a character who's actually mentioned in chapter seven that quite honestly is a very mysterious character from the Old Testament. Now this guy's name is Melchizedek. Good luck trying to spell that out. And he's actually only mentioned twice in the Old Testament, once in Genesis and then another time in Psalms. Now what we know about Melchizedek is that he was a high priest in the Old Testament and he acted as almost a type of Christ in his priestly ministry. Now here is where the mystery lies with Melchizedek. No one really knows who this guy was for sure. Now there is a couple of things that we do know about him? For example, Melchizedek actually means king of righteousness, and he was a king of Salem, what we would now call Jerusalem, and he has a sudden appearance and then disappearance in the book of Genesis after he meets with Abraham. Now listen to his description in verses 1 through 4. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met with Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Now listen to verse 3. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Now notice that it describes Melchizedek in verse 3 without father, genealogy, or beginning of days. Now the question comes down to if the author is describing him literally or figuratively. If the author is describing him literally, and I truly believe that he is, then this is an actual appearance of Jesus Christ himself in the Old Testament. Now this may sound strange, but this is actually what we would call a Christophany or a Theophany. It's an actual appearance of Christ himself in human form in the Old Testament. Now before you think I'm just making this stuff up, have a look at Genesis chapter 18 and you'll read about the Lord himself visiting Abraham in human form before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So even though this was something more rare and uncommon, it was something that did happen. All right, so what does Melchizedek have to do with Hebrews 7? Well, listen to this. The Bible shows us that Jesus is a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. In other words, the mystery surrounding Melchizedek, his duties, what he did, it was all foreshadowing of Jesus himself who was to come. You know, there's a quote that I love by St. Augustine which says, the New Testament is the Old Testament concealed, the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. Melchizedek is completely pointing at Jesus saying, he is the one. Listen to verses 14 through 17. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of fleshly commandment but according to the power of an endless life. Verse 17, for he testifies you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Finally at the end of the chapter listen to verses 26 through 27. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did, talking about Jesus, once and for all when he offered up himself. You see, with what Jesus did on the cross, there is no more need for animal sacrifice. The Bible says that Christ's sacrifice was once and for all. Jesus is more than enough. More than enough to cover all your sin, more than enough to meet every single one of your needs, and more than enough to put you in right standing with God. At the end of the day, Melchizedek, the Old Testament, everything pointed at one person and that that person was Jesus Christ. Guys, I don't have to tell you how much I appreciate you joining us today. I love your faces. Come back tomorrow for chapter eight. We are picking it up right where we left off. Hope you all have a very beautiful day. We will see you back here tomorrow.